welcome back to Arcade Spirits. Uh, welcome, Bangle. Welcome, anyone viewing anonymously. Ah, well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Bangle. Thanks for being here, and hello, Carencio, as well. Um, yeah, it's a fun fucking game. It's some good shit. Um, stream news. I installed a closed caption thing, uh, extension on my channel today, which I 110% stole from you, by angle. <laughs> I saw it on your channel and I was like, oh my god, they have that on here? <laughs> so I completely stole that from you. Um, to, if, if someone could kindly let me know if it's actually fucking working, I would like to... Uh, know if I actually set it up properly. I think I did. <laughs> steal for steal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Oh, who's yelling? Well, too damn dapper, thank you so much for the follow. Greatly appreciate your support. Hope you enjoy the stream today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah I, th I think I have it set up properly I can see uh, <laughs> it censors when I swear um, <laughs> um I can see it working in like the other tab that I have um if I click the button oh but, uh, yeah. Uh, ah, through Friendsim YouTube vids. Cool. Yes, well, welcome to a different visual novel. <laughs> uh, oh, Jahat. Strong clown mom. Yeah. Jahat, I got. I, I, uh, I love her, but also. Oh, no spoilers for Act 2, actually. <laughs> Maybe I should not. Maybe I should uh, watch myself. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, she's wonderful. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> Those videos are so old now. Oh, my goodness. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, holy shit. That was... Wow, can y'all believe Friendsome is two fucking years old now? That does not feel real. Um, <laughs> now let me see I can get this game open for the day that is today. Arcade Spirits. <laughs> Literally feels like they were coming out weeks ago. Exactly, right? Like, it, it doesn't feel like they've been around for that long, but like, yeah, it's been too flip fucking years um yeah all right arcade spirits should be on the screen um should be functional at the moment actually i'm just gonna take my sweater off i'm actually warm right now which is a fucking miracle because it's freezing fucking cold outside um Time compresses as you age. Tomorrow we'll think Homestuck was yesterday and then nerd is <laughs> uh, Yeah, honestly. Like, oh my god. The, the fucking epilogues do not feel like... Like, they feel it simultaneously. Like, like they've been around forever. And, like, they've only just punched us all in the face. Um, although, keeping up with Homestuck Squared updates... Uh, I hope that feeling a little bit. <laughs> Every day of the- oh, right, the decade year reminds us how old I feel. God. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel you, but I simultaneously am just like, God. I'm in my early 20s, but I'm already feeling old. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Twenty-eight. I feel seventy-eight. Help. 
Oh no. Yeah, I'm 23 and I'm sitting here like, oh boy. <laughs> It was six twelve. Uh, day six twelve. John rise up. <laughs> Do you feel fear? <laughs> yeah, John rise up. I think is one of the best like short flashes in the comic. It hits at home so beautifully, and and it's ah, oh, it's just so visually stunning. Yeah, we got to that. We actually. Mm, how long ago do we do that one? I actually, last time I was watching your stream by angle, I was looking at, I looked at the page number and I was like, okay, so Homestuck Reread streams did that a while ago, but we're technically only like 300 pages ahead of the decade reread starting, uh, since we're starting with Murder Stuck. Um, which, by the way, yeah. Homestuck reread streams this weekend. We're in the murder stuck zone, baby. Um, starting with Kanaya Return to Core on very first thing on Friday stream. I'm really excited to stream that. Um, fear, fear indeed. Uh, <laughs> Vagabond doesn't understand linear time. Yeah, I. I fucking love the mayor, but like, who doesn't love the mayor? <laughs> fun, yes, fun indeed. Murder, st the murder stuck zone. It has begun. Yeah, last weekend we watched uh, S Wake. Um, so yeah, we're starting with uh, Kanai Return to Core. Um, which is gonna be extra fun with uh the book commentary start, you know, crawling our way up to the end of book six, otherwise known as probably the last Viz Media Homestuck book. Look, y'all, I'm an optimist. I've been saying this shit for a while. Y'all have been here, you know, if you've been around a bit, y'all have been hearing my bullshit for a while about how, you know, like, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Could just be some other delays. Da -da -da. I'm losing faith, y'all. <laughs> just a touch. Just a touch. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold good on it. But, like, the last book came out in March of this year, and we are at nine months now since the last, and there's been no announcements. So, like, I got my fingers crossed. I really do. But anyways, this is Arcade Spirits recap. Okay, so, um, I know... At least, at minimum, one person present has no context for any of Arcade Spirits. It's a dating sim game. It's in an alternate universe where the arcade crash, video game crash in the 80s, like, didn't happen. So arcades are still, like, a big thing. Um, <laughs> and essentially, you're, you know, you're playing as, like, kind of a down and out. A uh, person who's looking for a job, you get this virtual assistant who hooks you up with a, with a gig at this arcade, you raise it to glory, uh, and make friends along the way, and in the last stream, um, in the last stream, all of that fell apart, uh, we were invited to dinner with a... And this arcade is a small business. We were invited to dinner with the competition. The owner of Deco's Palace. The uh, competitor big chain arcade that hates old nostalgia games. And is basically full of um, ticket gambling type games and... What did you do, Doc? Yeah. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. What did we do? Oh, we did something fun. So we got invited to dinner, and Francine was like, "Oh, I'm old and tired. You know, consider his offer." And we were like, "Fuck no." So we said, "Fuck no." Um, but she was like, "You know, just be polite," because she's been holding up niceties with this guy for decades. And we we're like, "Okay, well, maybe if we're polite, then he'll just like slink back into the shadows." But no, we were polite in saying, 
no. Also, he was fucking rude and a horrible person. And we were polite in saying no. And he was like, uh, I'm going to wipe you off the map. And we were like, wow, what the fuck? And then the next day, it's like, you know, it's just there's all this emphasis on like, you just have a bad feeling. And then you fucking wake up the next day and it's like, ah, fucking, uh, uh, you sleep in late, you miss your alarm, and you get to work and the doors are locked and shuttered. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? And you go inside and Francine's fucking dead. And then you find out that she passed it down, the arcade and her will, down to her daughter who didn't want it, who sold it to Deco's Palace. So it didn't fucking matter what you told him at the dinner the night before he got it anyway the next day and he was like ho 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 and he put on all these niceties about like obviously we're closed today for mourning and we'll be you know we'll be closed on the day of her funeral out of respect and then he fucking like fires half the staff and then he's like uh i want you to stay to gavin and gavin's like well i fucking quit fuck you and then we had the option to either decline accept or punch him in the face so we punched him in the face um and then, <laughs> and then basically, you know, depressive spiral, everything is bad. But at the end of the last chapter, it's like, so the irises are like, this is a little like virtual uh, assistants in their phone and, and they're kind of sentient, but they're like, we can't let the humans know we're so sentient. Um, but you see three of them, uh, yours, your roommate Juniper's and uh, your coworker Gavin's irises all have like this little meeting that's how the last stream ended they have this little meeting and they're like everything is wrong what do we do without letting them know that we're sentient <laughs> you know what what do we do without letting them know that we know this much um and then basically they pull a few strings and they get at, uh your roommate juniper and in our case ashley ashley is the character that we've been romancing um to come to your apartment and drag you out to this um a barcade basically uh and we have just arrived at the barcade and that's where we're at um stuff <laughs> yeah death yeah francine fucking dies i mean francine is an elderly woman she's been she it was her husband who owned this arcade he passed away a while ago she's been you know holding it down holding down the fort but mostly operations have been in the hands of um uh, employees but yeah so she fucking died and i was like are you fucking kidding me um but yeah we punched him in the face because fuck that guy um it was oh he's horrible and his business is horrible and he should feel bad uh also he was a total fucking predatory shark like pouncing on these this business this poor like mourning daughter and like you know cheaping her out of a whole bunch of money because he bought it for like he's like oh ho, and she sold it to me for way less than i would have paid for it it's like wow fuck you oh oh that gift oh yes doc scratch the doc scratch what did you do mm-hmm <laughs> I have read Problem Sleuth. Uh, it was a couple years ago that I read Problem Sleuth. Um, but yeah, I have only read it once. Uh, but I do... <laughs> yeah, Mobster Kingpin. <laughs> yes, I can picture the character that you are referring to. Capitalism bastard. Bastards. <laughs> but yeah, no, this guy's f fucking evil. Um, so... Uh... We're at a barcade. Let's fucking go. Is this place even open for business yet? None of the lights are on. Hello? Uh, Juniper, where'd you go? Okay, this is now unnecessarily creepy. But before I can wonder if a giant animatronic bear is going to leap out and eat my face, the house lights come up. Ha <laughs> Happy Intervention Day! <laughs> Aww. That's sweet, though. I care so much. Did I say something about it? Ah, uh, it's your second time. There's Ramble in the left gutter over here. 
Oh, happy intervention day. <laughs> Roxy, good name for the eight is the thick. Uh, oh yeah, our player character's name is Roxy Nitrum because like, why the fuck not? <laughs> I wonder if I'll get to see that their sprite today. They have pink hair. Surprise! Happy intervention day, Roxy! What? What she said. We're staging an intervent. We're staging an intervention on your behalf. It was your fault because you were thinking about Roxy with Tavros. <laughs> yes, Karencio came up with our with our character name. And we're also having a week for Francine, since uh, we weren't really welcome at her funeral and couldn't really hang around for the ceremony. Yeah, we didn't get the chance to heal properly, cons I mean, considering Deco kicked us all out before we could really do anything, do anything about anything. And here we are. So it's a wake and an intervention. A wake intervention, maybe? <laughs> I fucking love that they recorded a voice line for that. <laughs> I guess that makes it a wake intervention? A wake intervention. Really? Correctamundo. <laughs> yep, it was my idea. Well, Iris came up with the idea and gave me all the contact information I needed, but basically my idea, right? Oh, it was Jade Sprite! Oh, you're so fucking right! Oh my god, how did I not realize that? We literally just read that page, like, last week. I am fairly certain. <laughs> Yes, Juniper's voice acting is excellent. Just the thing to pick you up when you're feeling down. Aw, they're all here too. I mean, like, of course. Of course they are. But, um... I wasn't uh, sure if this was just an employees-only affair. Really. Seriously, kid. You've been a damn sad sack ever, th ever since things went to shit. Which, which I get, believe me, but it ain't healthy. So we went ahead and rented out this place for the afternoon to bring the family back together. For you, for Francine, for all of us. Now that you know why we're, g we're all gathered here today, let's get this party started! There's our player character sprite. Teo drags me into the group of my friends, positioning me at the head of it all. Leaving me a little bewildered, honestly, but trying to defend myself all the same. I don't... Look, I don't need an intervention. This is just how things work with the Nitrum family. We don't get to have nice things. The universe hath decreed it so. <sighs> then we def... Then we defy the universe, and we're going to help you defy it, too. BFFs for life. Girl in the middle must be gold, bud. <laughs> yeah, well, she is the, uh, professional esports, uh, gamer of the group. <laughs> so, one by one, we're going to tell you how awesome you are, you are and exactly why you're so awesome. And by the end, you'll be feeling a lot better. Hopefully. I let out a sigh, settling in. I owe it to them to sit and listen. They're my friends, or Ashley more so than that, even. And I know I've been lousy company. I've not so far gone... I've... I'm not so far gone as to deny that fact. Fine. Lay it on me, I'm listening. Allow me to begin, then. When you first entered the Funplex, I had my doubts. But I'm a naturally suspicious person, and thankfully, those doubts were easily disproved by your skill and enthusiasm. You came looking for your dream and found it. I swore to protect that dream, and that, and that promise is what brought me here today. And on your very first day, you went headfirst into the most chaotic situation the Funplex could, ha could have offered. A birthday party. You did so without hesitation. You put your body on the line to protect others when the Great Cupcake War of 20XX began. They were just cupcakes, Gavin. 
I am attempting to over-dramatize the event for comedic effect. Please allow me this moment of humor. <laughs> Fucking love, Gavin. <laughs> right, right. When a disruptive parent was screaming at a child over something that wasn't his fault, you stepped right in and dealt with it. Again. No hesitation. Impressive. Is this gonna be like a recap of events throughout the entire game? <laughs> I mean, we are on the second last- no, we're not on the second last chapter, we're on the third last chapter. Making <laughs> you clip your back. <laughs> I should learn how to make clips. I actually don't know how to make clips. <laughs> Since then, you've become an event manager, without goading, without prompting, showing great ambition. You've turned the Funplex's fortunes around, giving your all to promote it. You made your dream a reality. For years, I was supposedly in charge of the Funplex, but really, all I accomplished was shuffling numbers around. You are the one who helped it soar. And for that, you have my thanks. You are an exceptional individual. That fact remains true regardless of whether you can see it for yourself. <laughs> Me! Me next! <laughs> Remember when I screwed up and didn't tell you about that job opening at my office? <laughs> you weren't mad. Not even a little bit. Not even, like, quietly mad, like you could have been. <laughs> I know I can count on you, and you can count on me. Even when one of us makes a mistake, it can never shake that friendship apart. <laughs> when I came to you wondering if I should leave that job- When I came to you wondering if I should leave that job I hated- you told me to follow my dreams. I wonder how this speech, these speeches would go if you chose, like, literally the worst options every time. Because <laughs> there's, um, options to, like, tell Juniper to not follow her dreams and stuff like that. Uh, Alt-X. Oh, okay. Also a button on the video. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You gave me great advice and I've never been happier. I followed suit and chased my own dream. You inspire me. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's the guys from the coffee shop. It would be funny if they had nothing to praise you over. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> They're like, I told you that I had a dream that I wanted to follow, and you told me it was unrealistic and unattainable. <laughs> Thanks, friend. <laughs> yes, these lads. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are we fashionably late? Ben? Matt? In the flesh. Ooh, what if? What if? <laughs> Unless this world is a vast simulacrum. What, that we're all just brains in jars? Could be, could be. Well, isn't that something? <laughs> well, if that's the case, Roxy's the cutest little brain in a jar we ever, we ever never actually met. <laughs> it's true. And he brought so many cute dates to our little shop. <laughs> so nervous at first, but in time he became a part of the Twin Pines Mall family. Dearly missed. Ugh, don't remind me. Our new neighbors are so boring. They never come in for a treat or a read. Speaking of treats, we brought cake. We'll just be over here getting the goodies ready. Don't mind us. <laughs> Ooh, cake. I mean, my turn. <laughs> Roxy, you are a true friend of the Funplex. Oh, frustrating. Ugh, unlike the bastards who own it now. Positivity, Naomi. We're emphasizing positivity today. Right, right. Back at Donnywood, you convinced Gavin to get some games I really wanted for the Funplex. And wow, you even brought home Wyvern Keep. What a find. Wonderful. <laughs> You're a friend of arcade games in, in, in general, just like me. And even if you don't love them at a fanatical level, like uh, me, <laughs> I know you love them all the same. I know you're not happy with how things turned out. I'm not really happy about it either. It sucks. But... We did good things together in the time we had. Hamza has arrived. Hey, it's this fellow. Bonuts. 
Here's some fucking, uh, bonuts. <laughs> Naomi, stop. You wanna rock that look? Fuck yeah, Naomi has an excellent look. Hamza has arrived. You're late. An event does not truly begin until Hamza makes his presence felt. My blood burns. <laughs> Roxy, Hamza understands your fury. The hated enemy of all who love arcades has despoiled your funplex. However, in our short time together, I saw a burning spirit in you. I accepted your offer for Wyvern Keep recognizing that passion within you. Is he <laughs> not Hamza? I'm simply behind. Uh, apologies if there's a leg on the line today. <laughs> <laughs> Hamza would be shamed forever if he did not intervene and raise your spirits to new heights, and that is what he shall do. Ooh, cake. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> uh, now I want cake. Where do I get? When do we get cake? Soon. But I have things to say first. Things that will hopefully inspire you to be a happy clam instead of a grumpy Gus. I'm a happy clam now. See? See how I, see how I clam happily? <laughs> Can I have cake? <laughs> From our first day at the Funplex together, you've been supportive of me, even after I gave you quite the scare with Pinky. <laughs> You didn't let that bother you, and from that moment we've tackled many a crisis on the Funplex floor together. Amazing! <laughs> I've adored when we concoct hypothetical adventures in our downtime. <laughs> You're amazingly fun to be around. Remember when I stuffed you in that totally adorable maid costume? You could have fought it, but you embraced it. You were ready for anything and had a blast doing it. Oh yeah, cat, uh, cat girl maid. <laughs> You worked so hard to make Game Raymond successful. I watched you put your blood, sweat, and tears into that, and in the end, it all came together just how you planned. And the floor attendant on duty, as the floor attendant on duty during Game Raymond, I got to see firsthand all the smiles you brought to all those people. You rocked it. I saw you helping that customer when their game crashed. Losing your high score due to faulty electronics is no fun, but you dealt with it and made that person's day. When I was being overwhelmed by ravenously parched gamers, you stepped up and made sure all those thirsts were quenched. You are a soda fountain of knowledge. You made the Funplex a fun place to be for everyone. For the staff, for the casual and pro gamers, for the families, for me. I can honestly say that when you took over doing events at the Funplex, we've never had more fun. They've just been the best, all thanks to you. Oh, I forgot we still have cake. We need some of that. When are we gonna get some fucking cake over here? <laughs> um. Yeah, Ashley is adorable. Mm. Yeah, the Sailor Moon pin. Sailor Moon reference. Never watched or read it. I watched I watched it in like fucking kindergarten when it was on uh YTV in the mornings. Um cuz I did half day kindergarten, so I was home in the mornings. I remember this very explicitly. I I watched Sailor Moon on YTV. Um <laughs> But other than that, I, uh, I have not uh, gotten into it as of recent. <laughs> Dang, okay. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> fucking kindergarten, we go way back. I mean, like, that was, like, you know, early 2000s. That was, like, the, the Japanimation boom. <laughs> Camo Gothic lore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's yeah, the deep lore. When I was six years old, I watched Sailor Moon on my TV. <laughs> After Ashley's speech, I hear a beep beep from my phone. Hey, listen. Can I add my own US two cents? <laughs> I take my phone from my pocket, prompting Iris's image to appear there, smiling away at me. 
You trusted me when you didn't have to, when I'd already shown I was super bad at figuring out the right way to do things. I'm happy to be your assistant, Roxy. I'm learning more and more about how to be human, thanks to you. Um, that's all. You can put me back in your pocket, if you like. I'm good. It's not all, it's not all that hard to carry around my phone like this. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Just when I thought the speaking was done, a lull in the wake intervention, the most important person to me takes a step forward. My heart swells as she begins. <gasps> Cute! I was wondering if there was going to be a special thing from whoever was supposed to be, you know, the chosen romantic partner, which in this case would be Ashley. I was curious if they would, like, are they gonna tag it on the end of her thing, or is it not gonna be there? But nah, it's here. <laughs> ah, early middle school. Yeah, yeah. Wait! No, I must resist the cake. There's more I have to say. <laughs> I, words can only say so much, but I mean this with my all of my entire being. I love you so incredibly much. I never thought anyone would understand me or accept me for who I am, but Roxy, you came along and started crushing those insecurities. It is so cute. Also, she's talking about, uh, like, oh, I never thought anyone would understand me or accept me for who I am, because Ashley is... Uh, non-binary and there's this whole thing at the end of the day where she was like I don't know some sometimes I feel like a boy or you know sometimes I feel like a girl sometimes I feel like both or neither I don't really know what I am but can you still accept me and it was just like I fucking love you 20 bajillion times more now you're wonderful <laughs> it was yeah it was such a sweet moment with you, I feel like I can be who I want to be, free to express myself. I know it's difficult to see it right now, but you are loved. You are the world to me, and I want you to know that. I know you can rise up and defeat this feeling, just like I have. And if you don't believe in yourself, believe in me who believes in you. Isn't that a real thing? <laughs> I can love having more non-binary rep. Oh, yes. It was such a well-written scene. Written scene. Believe it. Um. Now, I would like to note that I've never seen a single fucking piece of Naruto ever in my life. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the Believe in Me Who Believes in You is, like... It comes from... Something. <laughs> Gurren Lagann? Maybe? Yeah. The only, honestly, the only reason I know that this comes from a specific piece of media is because of Homestuck. <laughs> I can't remember... Uh, uh, was it in Squared? Or bonus updates? Pretty sure it wasn't the epilogues. I think it was Squared. It is Gurren Logan, okay. Because they... they well, it's like... It's a Dave Cat conversation, I think. Dave's, you know... Believe in me, who believes in you? <laughs> and I, uh, Karkat's like, what the fuck? Or at least, like, I, that's the best of my memory. It might have actually been with different characters, but I'm fairly certain Dave is the one who pulled a Believe in me, who believes in you. <laughs> Freaking love Naruto. Ah, uh, yeah. Because of Dirk Strider? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I don't even remember. I think, th I think, I think this was meat. Epilogue's meat. A uh, conversation between Dave and Carcat with Dave telling Carcat to believe in himself for, like, the presidential race. I'm fairly certain that's the context for its, its use in Homestuck. <laughs> And now, I will eat cake. <laughs> Aw, are we not gonna get uh, the other three in on this too? Come on, where's Percy and Teo and Queen Bee? I'm speechless. Hmm, seems Roxy has some thinking to do. This is pretty normal for him when he gets that far away look. <laughs> Shall we begin the wake for Francine then? 
There's cake and coffee and spirits from the bar. Cake! <laughs> As if in slow motion, I watch them all switch their attention from me and redirect it towards the refreshments. They're all smiling, conversing, and serving cake to each other. None for me, thank you. Watching the blood sugar. Oh, fuck me, this cake is amazeballs! Oh my god, who the fuck this amazeballs anymore? <laughs> All we need now are some rockin' tunes to get this party on the next level. Haven't gone into Squared yet, but you remember people making the comparison to his shades uh, in the first one. Where he written of all possible trivia bearing down on my psyche. Um, oh, like comparing Dirk. <gasps> oh, Two Flower, hello! Welcome! Uh, welcome back. <laughs> As you can see, we have made uh, much progress. I, I do remember you popping in a while back. I think we were in chapter three. Um, yes, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for popping in. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think some someone last week hinted that this would be a part where we'd have to make some big decisions. So I get the feeling the grayscale background means that this is the time that's going to happen. <laughs> All of them here to support me, even without the funplex, even after everything going wrong, after Francine being taken from us too soon. Pity I missed the big moment earlier in this chapter. Oh my god, that was... <laughs> oh, that hit hard. It did. <laughs> I was very upset. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, it was, it was very good, but it, it also was like, oh. Wow, I really... Oh, we punched Deco. We chose to punch Deco. <laughs> <laughs> I never really thought of myself as central in all of this. I was the outsider at first, the one who walked in those doors looking for a job and nothing more. You wait, you got your you got your bits ready to ruin it? <laughs> wait, ruin what? Wait. What? <laughs> I've always been on the outside, honestly. Moving from town to town, always the new kid. Never really important to anyone, not until I'd settled in one place just long enough to get to know Juniper. But by then, I'd come to expect that I'd never be happy. So when I finally was happy and that got taken away, well, I guess I'd assumed that's how things go. Going with the flow. But now, hmm, okay, I don't want this to end. I want to feel like celebrating again. Change is inevitable and I can adjust or this game isn't over, not by a long shot. Oh yes, Kapow indeed, that was, it was incredibly satisfying to be able to click on that option. <laughs> uh, yes, we, we chose to be, uh, to cordially decline his offer the night before, uh, even though it was very tempting to tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> um, and, and they were like, you know what? I regret not telling him to go fuck himself. So now, I, now we're gonna punch him in the face. <laughs> um, top two choices. Oh yes, we have a decision uh, to make. Um... Yeah, I don't want this to end. Uh, I want to feel like celebrating again. Change is inevitable, and I can adjust, or the game isn't over, not by a long shot. <gasps> oh, choose next narrative action. Okay, so you have the floor then. Uh oh, you confirmed too early. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Where's, where, which one you lean towards? 
The choice is yours. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I'm... I feel like all, all of them are, are pretty fitting. I think this is uh, one, of the, one of the few options where I've been like, hmm. This isn't a big decision. Ah! Oh my god! <laughs> ah! Um... Okay. Hmm. <laughs> a little more context, don't tell me. <laughs> Those are coming up. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, oh yeah, that's right. You haven't seen this game before, Bangle. So, these four choices, each of them represents, like, a personality trait. Like, you get different points for different, like, personality traits uh, for the conversation options you choose. <laughs> yeah, we got gamer stats. <laughs> Um, you can choose at the beginning of the game whether or not you want to see which options correspond with which personality traits, and I chose to keep that turned off so that, uh, we can really go with the gut and, like, not have that influence any sort of, like, potential metagaming type decisions. Um, so, yeah, each of these corresponds to a different personality trait, uh, and they'll give us points for that, and maybe uh change story things because it's, it's it's big decision time but yeah big decisions later hmm yeah so um let's see if i can like guess which one goes with which there's like oh i don't know why i can never remember the actual proper names for any of them there's like gutsy which is like the the bold move Kindly, which is, you know, like, being kind. <laughs> um. Oh, you just put them in chat. <laughs> Thank you, Carencio. <laughs> yes. Yes, they all have to end in Y, indeed. Hope I have picked the gay option. <laughs> uh, gonna guess your majority kindly. Oh, uh... Yes, actually, we are, with the, uh, like, gutsy and lawful kind of tied for second. But yeah, that is the one that we've been hitting up the most. <laughs> um. Oops, I picked the... Oh, wait, did you put it... Am I missing something here? Did you choose an option in uh, the chat? Oh, the first one, I don't want this in. Where am I? You're kind of buried. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's real weird. I don't know why that message isn't showing up on my phone. I don't, know. don't like that. I would like to receive all of the messages from the chat. Um, but yes, okay. I don't want this to end. And that was indeed the kindly option. Yeah, this is, oh yes, for context, can we, we can look at it during this scene. So this is the current uh, personality balance and relationship uh, scores for context. Um, as you can see, we went pretty hard on courting Ashley <laughs> as well. I don't want this to end. I don't want it to be over. Destroyed by Dekonami, by the loss of Francine. I just want this happiness to go on and on. Ugh, finally, I found something solid, something real I could cling to. I wasn't the new kid anymore. Now I had friends. I had love. Ashley seems strong in this meta. Yeah, that was like, that was a pretty early game decision. We were like, Ashley? wonderful and then oh and then it was amazing getting to get, getting to know her more and then like the like the letter that she gives you at you know kind of at the end of the date on the beach just like 
made me so happy. <laughs> um, Cause like, uh, yeah, we need more of that rep. And also just like that whole letter was kind of like a big mood. <laughs> Finally, I found something solid, something real I could cling to. I wasn't the new kid anymore. Now I had friends. I had love. I don't want this to end. I don't want this to end. Everybody looks up when I finally speak. We lost the Funplex. We lost Francine. It hurts. But... What we have here today, I don't want to lose this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want my friends back. Who's with me? Smiles all around. And you know what? It feels good to be back. For the next hour or so, my sadness fades away piece by piece. We share stories, many of which I'd never heard before, about the funplex and the shenanigans that went, went on around it. Surprisingly, Ben and Matt spin the most tales about Francine's exploits. They'd been neighbors for decades. Oh, cute. The so-called wake intervention gives us all a chance to heal and to bond. For all we've lost and all we still have, we are still together. Despite one little problem, which nobody wants to talk about. The hour grows late, and we only have this place rented for the afternoon. I can feel it in the air, that unspoken worry. Will we see each other again? No doubt we can arrange more get-togethers, but they'd all be reunions over what was lost, not really building anything new. Nostalgia, not progress. Without the funplex, without Francine, will we eventually simply fall away? That dark little thought troubles me as I swirl my drink, rem remaining quiet while the others talk. Beep beep. <laughs> beep beep, Roxy. Hmm? Oh, hey, Iris. What's up? I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, me too. I'm glad too. So... Do you want me to start finding you a new job? I can search while you're talking with your friends. No problem. I do need to get back to living my life. But what sort of life do I want to live? Mm -hmm. So, I want my dream back. And I don't know where exactly that will take us. Or I want a new job. Mm. I mean, like, I'm leaning towards I want my dream back. Um, but what are thoughts and feelings? <laughs> what are thoughts and feelings from y'all? in the chat. <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> so... Big choice. If y'all are... Feel, feeling, feeling that decision as well, I shall... continue forward. But, uh... Thoughts, feelings, we gotta go for it, right? I mean, like, fuck yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I gotta be frank. This was the uh, situation I was ever in in real life. I would probably go with getting another job. But this is a video game about making your dreams come true. So I think we should fucking go for it. <laughs> if you get a new job, the story ends. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that does make sense. <laughs> um, yeah, that definitely feels like a game over. I want my dream back. I don't just want a new job. I want my dream. 
my funplex. Not, oh, not a bad end, but like the end of the arcade dream. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you choose new job, it's still like, you still go through to the end of the eighth chapter then. It's just like a different, completely different like pathway and ending. Mm. I don't just want a new job. I want my dream. My funplex. Not just four walls and a bunch of games, but a community. When I was a lifeguard, I saved lives and made a safe place for people to enjoy the pool with friends. I'm not done with that dream. And more importantly, I don't have to be done with it. All around me are pioneers of this community. This culture. Oh, new job is just happily ever after the end. Mm. Okay, well, I think we made the right decision then, for sure. <laughs> Technicians, d designers, enthusiasts, investors, people with connections. And that's when the idea starts to form. Iris, can you search for commercial spaces? Ones for lease or rent? Hmm. Huh? Of course. I'm a literal search wizard. Why? Oh, I know. Oh. I think I get it. You're... I step away from my quiet corner and approach the group. It's time to take back control over my dream. And that starts here. Okay. So this is a, another bigger decision. We've got our uh, lesser options crossed out. <laughs> Why can't we open a new arcade? What's stopping us? I'd like, or I'd like to keep sharing my dream with you. Yeah, time to make our own arcade. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ooh, these are both good. <laughs> Um, thoughts and opinions, or should I grab one or have a sip of water while you mulling over our options? I'm biased, I can't vote. <laughs> I'm leaning towards... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are those crossed out? Oh, so certain, like, big speech moments, um, they'll cross out the options or uh, for the personality traits that you have the least um, uh, amount of points for. You <laughs> like being gay and sharing dreams. <laughs> yes, we are not quirky or gutsy enough. But, uh... Yeah. Let's, let's be gay, share dreams. I'd like to keep sharing my dream with you. No. I'm not ready for this to end. The crowd hushes when I grab their attention. I set my drink aside and step up to them. The Funplex was my dream. I came to see that in time. A wonderful place where friends could have fun together, away from their troubles and cares. I want to keep sharing that dream with you. There's only one way to make that a reality. We open our own arcade. <laughs> Everyone in this room loved the Funplex and misses it dearly. We'll always miss Francine. But in honor of what we lost, we need to keep fighting. I'm ready. Are you? Who will help me start a new dream? Snaps for that. Makes sense. It's a cool gameplay thing. It also makes some 
inherent like character consistency by not saying things wildly unlike your PC's personality. Yeah, it is a really it is a really great system. <laughs> I'd be honored to join your dream, Roxy. <laughs> the Funplex saved me in a lot of ways. I won't let it go so easily. I'd love to join you. In the next game, if you act wildly out of character, sometimes they call you on it. Oh my god, that's so great! <laughs> Wait, oh. Question, when you say the next game, do you mean like a replay of Arcade Spirits? Or like a successor game to this? Um, oh yes, I did already read this line. <laughs> As would I. As would I. Faced with the prospect of spending my remaining days at home or in some other arcade, I'm absolutely in favor, love. <laughs> Making a sequel. <gasps> Fuck yeah! Oh my god, that's amazing! I am so excited for that. That's wonderful. <gasps> oh my goodness, it would be... I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> the new challengers. No release date yet, though. Fair, fair. But, ah, uh, that is really awesome. I'm so excited for that. I'm really excited to see uh, what you come up with. This is such a it's been <laughs> I've enjoyed this playing this through like a lot. It's been a very excellent game. <laughs> I may be a Merc customer, but my heart my heart called the Funplex home, and it'll call your new arcade home as well. <laughs> You've got my thanks, both of you. Okay, this is no longer a wake intervention, people. Now, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> a wake conspiracy. <laughs> uh, I fucking love that. There's voice lines recorded very specifically for <laughs> these this one sing singular words that just appear in this one's cuz they're so silly. <laughs> It's a wake turban spiracy, sure, why not? Portmanteaus, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> we settle down around a table, a nice round one, to discuss the future. I'm leading the show, but I don't take the spotlight. Not this time. We have to all work together to make this dream a reality. This is it? The next few decisions are going to be critical in shaping the future I have in my mind's eye. I'll need to choose very, very carefully, because there's no take backsies. Oh god. <laughs> More decisions, okay. Iris is looking for spaces we can use, but we're going to need money, obviously, and arcades are risky startups. I could always respond to one of the many Nigerian princes emailing me amazing offers, but I'm thinking more traditional funding is safer. <laughs> Way I see it, there's four people here who could foot the bill to get us off the ground. Hamza, you've got a tangled web of connections in the industry, access to games, and plenty of cash, and a freewheeling whimsy to spend it. Hamza must consider this. Hmm, Hamza is a man of resources indeed. Percy, you've been building a charity war chest for when you pass. I know an arcade isn't a sound investment, and it's hardly a charity, but... You promised me Mr. Moopy would always have a home. If I can help restore that home, I'm game, love. Okay, next choices are big, but none of them are wrong. Go with what's the most fun. Okay. Hmm... Oh, okay. Then that. 
Ben and Matt, you two know how to run small business. You've got invaluable knowledge and resources we could draw from, if you're willing to dip a toe in this industry. Hmm, we have been looking for new horizons to conquer. Cue me immediately thinking about Animal Crossing. <laughs> new lands to explore. There would be caveats. Terms. Conditions. Exemptions. <laughs> Rules, guidelines, best practices, worst practices. That's not a thing. Oh. <laughs> Hamza would likewise have conditions. Mm hmm. As would I. Mm hmm. Understandable, of course. Let me hear your thoughts, then I'll decide. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> Decision number one funding and direction. In order, to, in order for me to back your play, Hamza would require you to strike at the very heart of Dekonami's empire and open a family restaurant alongside your arcade. Take from him the very business he adores so much. Hmm. Uh, we don't know the first thing about running a restaurant. Thankfully, your business partner does. I own several restaurants. I would provide staffing and resources. No risk, no reward. Now, this is a risky play, but if it succeeds, the rewards shall be tremendous. Actually, that's similar to what Matt and I had in mind. Oh yes, but rather than a restaurant, well, we'd like to open a barcade. I've always wanted to run a bar. I'd raise a glass to that idea. <laughs> After all, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. Ha, huh, I know that that is a Cheers reference. <laughs> Right? That, that is Cheers, right? I'm not mixing that up. <laughs> Worst practices might be a thing on Alternia. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> yes, I have never seen a full episode of Cheers in my life, but I do know that that is the theme song. Thank you for confirming, Carencio. <laughs> uh, fun fact, I learned recently that uh, we actually have a couple of like cheers brand like uh alcohol glasses uh from the restaurant that restaurant mm, the bar that inspired uh cheers uh chilling in a cupboard downstairs we have a lot of like mugs and glasses in my house it's a little bit ridiculous <laughs> 80s workplace that comes with a major influence oh cool Now, it wouldn't be nearly as large scale as a family restaurant. Much safer. Not quite as profitable, but still quite tidy. Hmm. Honestly, I'd prefer if you simply ran a video arcade and nothing more. Adding on extra seems like a recipe for failure. We know how to operate a simple small scale arcade, so why not stick to our strengths? I'll grant it as a low ceiling for success. I'll grant it as a lower ceiling for success than the others. It's just an arcade and won't pull in anybody looking for more. Low risk, low reward. But I'd say that would be my condition. We need to stick to the basics. Hmm. So, take the big gamble on a family restaurant, or make a cozy little barcade, or just go with a classic video arcade. This decision is going to infect, affect the entire direction of the new venture. What do I want? What is my dream? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Ah. Hmm. I. Mm, hmm. I am leaning away from a barcade. I'm leaning away from a venue with uh, a lot of alcohol. Mm. But that is just my personal tendencies. And I feel like if they're if they're aiming to capture recapture the spirit of the funplex, um I mean, I guess something being a barcade doesn't mean that you can't have young people and kids in it at all, ever. Um, hmm. 
kicking it with Hamza and obliterating Deco's palace, <laughs> like, <laughs> sounds excellent. <laughs> but, yeah, it is that big risk. He does say that he knows how restaurants work. So, um, you know, I'm liking the sound of that. Um, but yes, we do keep it simple with Percy. Um, it's probably more likely to have the success that we're looking for, because we know what we're doing. Uh-oh, I was multitasking. <laughs> Well, I mean, the long and short of it is, uh, up on the screen, basically. These are the, the options for our, our different business ventures, who we shall partner with, and, uh, the direction to take it. Hmm. Um... I don't know, any other strong opinions or strong leanings? I'm like, I'm kind of caught between Hamza and Percy, but I'm like leaning towards Hamza because like everything that came out of Deco's mouth made me very angry. <laughs> My God, eat the sun! Absolutely. You know what? Yeah. I uh, yeah. Hamza sounds good. Yeah, Hamza. Dare the impossible. Fight God, eat the sun, open a restaurant. Got it. <laughs> Hamza, let's steal Deco's restaurant business. Hamza, I think we can do business. We'll make a combination arcade and family restaurant. Such is the iron will of Hamza. You will not regret this. A bit disappointing, but we'll still be happy to lend a hand where we can. Absolutely. Hmm. Having Mr. Moopy available for families to enjoy would be nice, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Fuck Deco, Hamza, revenge. Yeah. Is is Deco the evil guy? Yes. He's he's Dave and Buster's basically. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh interesting to get a peek into the the famed Deco's palace that had only been scoffed at. <laughs> Throughout the rest of the story. <laughs> you thought I said what? <laughs> okay. The second thing we need to talk about is what sort of games we want to focus on. The Funplex did a little bit of everything, and we will too. We want to include all gamers. But we can also highlight one style of play or another. Really provide best-in-class gaming for a specific audience. Any thoughts? Decision number two, game focus. Sweet. <gasps> retro games. It's gotta be all about retro games. You know I'm capable of keeping those older games in tip top shape. If we focused on retro games, we could serve an audience that Deco's completely that Deco's completely ignoring. I would agree with Miss Fairchild. Retro games are an untapped market. I'll grant it wouldn't pull in as much profit, but we know gamers are seeking them. We don't have to make all the money, just enough to keep our pure and untainted dream afloat. And we can do that with a well-curtained retro game library. Nope. No way. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay, bye, Uncle. <laughs> Retro's cool and all, but let's talk esports games. They'll draw money better than they'll draw money better than jamming a magnet up your ass and dragging you through Fort Knox. <laughs> get get a couple good fighters, more than one on fist of discomfort, some race and dance games, the kind of stuff where folks can compete head to head, and we're golden. I have to agree with Queen Bee. You can play retro games on emulators and consoles, but you can't duplicate the community experience of an arcade at home. If we had an esports focus, we could build something together which works as a second home for all sorts of gamers. I think you know what I'm going to suggest. Redemption and prize games. They provide excellent profits. Mm. 
It's the core of Deco's business model, yes, but I think if we focus on those games, we can do them right. No predatory pricing, no scams or ripoffs. And the truth is, most people enjoy that, from kids wanting to win to win that big prize, to the wistful adults recapturing their childhood dreams of playing skee-ball on the boardwalk. Yes! They're simple to play, and most of all, fun. If they're done right, we can make meaningful memories for everyone. And prizes! Did I mention the prizes? We can stock the shelves with the coolest prizes around. Better than Deco's prizes, which fall apart two minutes after you get them. Which matches my ideal arcade more? We'll have all three, sure, but do we emphasize retro games, esports, or prize games? Hmm. Hmm, 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 indeed. Boo money. <laughs> so I'm guessing you're not into the prize games? I'm not really feeling the prize games either. <laughs> um. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Retro or esports is uh, appears to be the two options that we're kind of <laughs> bouncing between. <laughs> um. Oh. Hmm. Um. Well, we're going with family restaurant style. So having, like, hmm. Hmm. Oh, a redemption of a stretch. A good idea, indeed. <sighs> yes. Stretch and also crack my neck, I guess. I don't know if the mic picked that up. I kind of hope it didn't. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. Any, I don't know. Strong, any strong, strong feelings or leanings or... I'm kind of I'm kind of tossed up because I'm picturing like, well, because if we do the family restaurant thing, then maybe going with like the retro style games, like you know the Wyvern Keep that was such a fond childhood memory. Um, but you know, bringing in the esports focus. Also, you know, that's, uh, I don't know how the fuck to talk. Um, feel a little bad not going with Ashley's choice, but we got so many points already and the other options are better. Yeah, I mean, like, there's that, and there's also, um, I don't, uh, I don't know if, these decisions are doling out relationship points. I mean, I was gonna say we didn't get one for the previous decision, but also we picked Hamza, who is not an option to gain relationship points with, so I guess that's a moot point. Um, you, you don't want to upset her. You did hear it? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Esports family restaurant, God, can you imagine? I know, right? Like, because, like, like, that's the thing, is that, like, technically speaking, those two things, like, they kind of clash. Because, like, East, But that's the thing, is that eSports is not just young adults. Like, Splatoon, Splatoon in particular, because that's my, you know, that's my, basically my only eSports experience. Um, with Splatoon in particular, um, a lot of the, like, top players are, like, best players that make it really high up in competitions it's not just young adults there's a lot of like teenagers like high school age students um who are up among the top players like i think it was the um australia new zealand team for the world championships in 20 oh, was it 18 or 19 i think it was uh, 2019 the australia new zealand 
uh, championship team was like entirely high schoolers. <laughs> um, right? So there's that um, kind of side of things as well, but I, I also know that that's not the case for every esports. <laughs> um, but yeah. I don't know, it's like, hmm. I kind of like the idea of, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm leaning a little more towards the esports, not just because like, I tend to lean towards the unconventional, um, <laughs> but also um, just like, I like the idea of creating a community hub you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Dang, this is making me miss going to Splatoon events. There's, <laughs> there is a local Splatoon community that did in-person events before COVID. Uh, I only actually got to go to one of them. There was actually supposed to be another one, like, end of March that had to get cancelled. Um, because, like, lockdown started. I was very fucking upset about it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, I'm thinking we, you know, we went to, uh, it was at, like, a, well, it was, like, a barcade-type environment. The place that we went was a barcade. Um, but yeah, anyway, I feel like I'm rambling now. Are we good with esports? <laughs> are, we, are we good with an esports focus? Are we good to move on? <laughs> or are there strong counterpoints? Uh, either against esports or, sure, or or for retro in particular. Sure, esports? Fuck yeah. Okay, Queen Bee and Teo will have great esports. Arcades are all about healthy communities. If we can build an esports scene around the new arcade, we'll have regulars and healthy competition. I'm game for that. Oh, we did get relationship points. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hot damn, now this is a plan. A choice choice, kid. My body is ready for this- my body is ready for this next dance. I feel like I read that sentence weird. <laughs> okay, so that's money and games. Now, let's go beyond what we already had at the Funplex. Let's make this something- let's really make this something special. Decision number three, new project. Ooh. I want a defining feature for our arcade, one which will make it stand out. Something nobody else is doing, something nobody's even thought of before. All ideas are on the table. If it was too outlandish for the Funplex, it's not too outlandish for me. Show me what you got. <laughs> Juniper, hello. Well, um, I mean, I'm not really part of this, but... Come on, you're my best friend and 100% a part of this. I couldn't be here in this moment if it wasn't for you. Go on, Juniper. What's your idea? Branding. The new design for my joint is okay, but it's not like I enjoy designing new corporate logos for fruit companies and stuff. What if I came and worked for you instead? Be your brand manager. An arcade really needs a stellar image, stellar image management to stand out from the rest. Like the event poster I made for you. What if? Mm. Oh, hey, Juniper? I can add to that. What if we work together? I was thinking of designing a new mascot costume anyway, but I could collaborate and coordinate with you on how it'll tie into the visuals for the rest of the arcade. Yeah, it's a winning combination! Ashley and I could do great work together, coming up with some really stellar branding and marketing. We'll stand out in a crowd. Hell, I know exactly what sort of project I'd want us to do. Streamer support. Assembling and packing away my streaming rig, rig each day is ridiculous, and duct taping a webcam in front of a screen is a lousy hack. If I could just step right up to a game and, I don't know, swipe a card or something and be streaming with a direct feed in a few seconds? Well, I can think of a dozen streamers who'd just flock to our place to get a piece of that. Yeah. 
Actually, I think I know how we could do that. I could rig up a general purpose daughter board which plays man in the middle with the video feed, works with an RFID reader to get the streamer's info, ties in a central video encoder and the Wi-Fi network. Yeah, I could make that happen. And without damaging any classic hardware. Once more in English, please. I know software, not hardware. We stick a thingy in the thingy and everything works just fine. <laughs> I'm sure there's some legal and copyright issues to tackle, but if we can do it, let's be the world's first streaming arcade. I was thinking, well, if the reason why older games are considered a dead end is that they don't work in the ticket game, game ecosystem, Lovely. why not add ticket output to normal games? We could reward skilled players with prize tickets based on their high score or speed of completion, with the right balancing, we could make old games just as desirable as new ones. Perhaps. Hmm. As Naomi said, there may be legal hurdles to clear, but I'm in favor of this idea. It's not that I love prize games. I find them boring, personally. You know I favor pinball. But profit is the lifeblood of, the, of an arcade, and prize games are profitable. If we can get Moopy's, Moopy producing tickets, well, that's something nobody's ever done before. Interesting. But as much as I'd love to do all three, I doubt we'd have the money or time for that. Let's focus on one project to launch our arcade with. Do we want to have really good branding, or streamer support, or retrofit tickets on old games? Hmm. These all sound pretty good. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. I hmm. <laughs> this is uh the Caitlin makes thinking noises stream actually. Um Okay. I hmm. <laughs> I think I'm leaning towards the first option. Um, because you can have all the bells and whistles in the world, but if you don't really catch people's eyes, they're not gonna come in and see that you have all the bells and whistles in the world, right? Also, I love the idea of giving Juniper a job that she, like, really loves and enjoys instead of designing fruit company logos. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think Ashley would be excellent for that. Graphic design is my passion, yeah. And we, yes, we did turn down Ashley once already. Being a little touch guilty about that. Um, but yeah. Also, the other two have legal caveats. <laughs> um, which is always tricky business. Um, but yeah, I do love the idea of like fully bringing Juniper in on this as well. Okay, I feel like we're mostly agreed on that one. I feel like we're fairly well agreed. It's probably the, the fastest of all the decisions, I think. <laughs> the other two are good ideas. Um, Yeah, the take the ret retrofitting the game is an interesting option, and the like streaming arcade is like like that sounds really fucking cool, but yeah, I wanna I want you know kind of pay Juniper back for all your assistance and pushing us in this direction and. Also, I, I think that this is just a good place to start. Is genuinely a graphic designer. Oh, cool! Need to start actually making art again. Oops. <laughs> oh my god, me and my fucking painting. <laughs> uh, just graduated from fucking art school and I haven't actually made any art in like... an entire year, basically. Oops. <laughs> We need to stand out from the pack. 
That means strong graphic design and a great mascot. I can't think of anyone better suited than Juniper and Ashley. Yeah, you won't regret this, Roxy. I got ideas. I'll make the ultimate cosplay, my masterpiece, my Mona Lisa. Just you wait and see. One more thing. Oh god. Oh, there's gonna be a text box, isn't there? <laughs> Final decision, the name. If this is going to be my baby, my dream arcade, I've got a name already in mind for it. So, barring any objections, I'd like to welcome you all to... Oh god, oh god, a text box. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Naming things, the hardest part. Yeah, oh my god. Thinking of a name. Um, yeah, we spent like, I think it took us like 15 minutes to name the fucking event. <laughs> Um. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, text. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you literally stopped making things after I graduated. Yeah, I real I've realized now that m basically every time, like I, you know, I went to art school for a reason. I'm passionate about it, and I want it to be a part of my career, but. Basically every piece of art I've made for most, you know, of my life, um, at least like traditional media art, um, has been either for school or as a present for someone. Um, <laughs> rumble into pumpkin patch. Is that even? How many characters? Okay, will that even fit? Wait. Oh my God! It fits. <laughs> I just wanted to see if it fits. Let's see if we can uh, come up with uh, something more. But yeah, we are. We have a restaurant, uh, and the arcade area does have an esports focus. Ah, uh, names, wordplay. Hmm. Oi. <laughs> Words. Um. Yeah. Esports. Food. Esports. Food. <laughs> Both graduate. Yeah, yeah. Challenge you to art trades. <gasps> Ooh. I accept your challenge. <laughs> don't. Wait, don't. Wait, don't do what? <laughs> Wait, I've already forgotten what I just said. Don't do what? <laughs> what? I, I, I think I was just muttering. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Gamer fuel! Oh my god. Isn't- okay, that's like an actual brand though, right? I think? It's like... Gamer energy drinks or something? I feel like I recall that being like a big gamer YouTuber like... Sponsor thing, that they've been sponsoring a lot of big name... Uh... Video game like YouTubers. And, oh, and live streamers. G Fuel? Yeah. Does that, does that stand for Gamer Fuel, or is that just a joke? <laughs> um, because I've, I've heard people joke about it being Gamer Fuel, but I act, I, I just realized I don't actually know if that's the official brand name. <laughs> um, I'm gonna back this up before I accidentally hit enter or something. <laughs> Um, oh, don't do it, it was in reference to Rubble into Pumpkin Patch, Bling the Leg, oops. Oh, yeah, 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 no, it's all good. No, I was not, <laughs> I was not intending to actually use it. Um, I just backed it up to make sure that I didn't accidentally use it. 
if I get flailing around and like smash the enter key by accident or something. Um, I guess G Fuel is a real brand name. Yeah, I guess it is. That was good though. Um, but yeah, it is a ga Gatorade fuel. Oh man, I haven't had Gatorade in a fucking decade. Um, actually, no, that's not true. I probably did have it sometime in high school. Um, um, oh my god, we're gonna be sitting here until like the entire rest of stream. For names, okay. So, all right, so the event, when we named the event, it was a portmanteau of gamer, of gay, gamer, and merriment. Um, eat while you beat. Okay. <laughs> oh no, yes. Uh, just like the split second realization. <laughs> Forgot my thinking hat. <laughs> Perhaps some manner of stopping point for those who enjoy games. A game stop, if you will. <laughs> mm hmm. Very true. Uh. <laughs> game. Game stop and shop. Game. Game swap. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That's like, that's a lot, but you know what, if, if we can't co come up with anyone else, any, any, anyone else, anything else, I'd fucking go for it. Why not? We called our event Gay Merriment, like, we can, we can get, we can get a little, a little silly. God, that's fucking great. <laughs> Game swap. Um, God, I'm trying to remember. Uh, the names of some of the game, like, places in, that I've been to in Toronto. Um, uh, oh yeah, Power Up. There's a bar called just Power Up Game Bar. Uh, what's the other one, though? I know there's another one that I should know the name of, but I super don't remember right now. Um... What other game terms can we use that aren't the word game? Yeah. Exactly, right? Like, um... Yeah, so, like, like Power Up Game Bar, or, like, uh... So glad that game swap gets silver medal. <laughs> I I guess that is one way of putting that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it it does bring me much enjoyment. <laughs> um, wow. You know what would be handy to do is to actually use my big kid brain, um, and an internet browser. <laughs> um, y'all, fucking big brain moment, googling, uh, video game terms. <laughs> um, um, Wow, this Wikipedia article is actually pretty detailed. Um, oh, thing that just popped into my head, so more specifically, uh, like speed, speed run terms, um, or at least like, I don't know, the, like no clip popped into my head, but like, how do we incorporate that into like, a name. One up, something or other. Mm. Um. <laughs> One up buffet. Um.
Looking at a list of words, <laughs> they are. Hmm. There's a lot of words on this web page. Maybe I should actually put the web page in the fucking screen. That's a novel idea. Um. Speed eating? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, no, I'm... Mm, no, no. Not, no. Not a good idea to speed run food. Absolutely. Um. Ah. Uh, mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> yeah, and like, I, uh... Food, like, eating competitions are like the exact opposite of... Uh, my jam. Epic. <laughs> <laughs> no scopes feed run meals with my fire. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> uh. Next level branding, just bring in Markiplier. Yeah, our next level branding is literally just fucking Markiplier. <laughs> um. Um. Oh, critical. Oh. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm looking down this term. I'm on the seas, and one of the suggestions is cybersport, and the definition is just CE sports. But if we could put, I think cyber would be a hip word to include somewhere in the name. AFK Arena 2? I disrespectfully look <laughs> uh, I, yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm. I'm kind of with you on that one, yeah. Um, AFK Arena 2. Is that, like, is that a reference to a specific game? I'm googling that. AFK Arena 2 Awesome New Event. No. Uh, oh, AFK Arena is a game? Uh, I'm not familiar. I found an ascension guide, and I don't know what that means. Um, is this? Okay. From the aesthetics I'm getting off this wiki, is this anything like League of Legends? And also I apologize if you take that as an insult. <laughs> um, the Dark Souls of Restaurant. <laughs> Hello food with plain <laughs> Um God. Markiplier has done a load of ads for AFK Arena. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I feel like I've probably heard the name somewhere, but I've never seen any actual gameplay footage or like played it or anything like that. Oh, is it mobile? Is it a mobile game? Mobile games tend to do like really heavy sponsorship stuff. Or maybe I'm just thinking of uh, Rage Shadow Legends. <laughs> There's a real life restaurant called Lettuce Eat. <laughs> ah, that's good. I guess, I guess, like, hmm. Hmm. 
Welcome to more thinking noises. Hmm. <laughs> um. Oh my god, that's what DPS stands for? <laughs> this whole time I had no fucking idea what DPS stands for, and now I know. Planet of the Grapes. Never played it, just ads, and yeah, mobile game. Mm. <laughs> um. Deathmatch, debuff, deconstructible environment, developer, development, hell, dialogue, tree, blah, 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 blah. Um. Okay, let's see what we got so far. I like I like cyber. Um, I I like having cyber in there somewhere because it just sounds funky. Welcome to the club. It took you forever to learn too. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> um. Uh. Um, ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, do 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 do. Fuzzle? What? The final boss in a game. I have never heard the final boss referred as a fuzzle. Cyber Sports Cafe, Development Hell, Rest, Development Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> oh, I like that. Um, but uh, I I feel like we we may not want to evoke the uh, less nice side of the industry in our <laughs> title. <laughs> Our restaurant name, yeah, F O O Z L E. It is on the Wikipedia glossary of video game terms <laughs> as a term meaning the final boss of the game, which, uh, I have never heard in my entire life. Um, and if you if you click on it, it just takes you to the Wikipedia page for boss and video games. Um, oh, I see. Here it is. Fuzil describes a cliche final boss that exists only to act as the final problem before a player can complete the game. Scorpius stated in 1994 that about 98% of all role-playing video games can be summed up as follows. We go out and bash on critters until we're strong enough to go bash on Fuzil. <laughs> Oh, a fuzzle is a botched or bungled attempt at something, usually a shot in golf. It's also a verb meaning to bungle. It's sometimes used in the gaming community to describe a final boss. Yeah. Dang, too many characters. Can't- oh my god, what if we just- that made me think of, uh, Half-Life VR AI. Um, and the fucking bit with reciting the Wikipedia page for a chair. Uh, if we just, like, make the entire restaurant title fill up as many characters as possible with, like, the Wikipedia definition for a foozle. Steamed for streams. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um... Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, round up. One more time. Oh my god, we get it. <laughs> You've truly been here for like a solid 15 minutes. Okay, Steam for Streams. Um, Development Hell's Kitchen. Cyber Sports Cafe. Um, Development Hell. Right, uh... I know the kids hollow food. <laughs> um, epic no scope speed final meal. <laughs> okay, so we gotta make a final decision, and I'm putting my foot down to make a final decision because I'm bad at decisions. Um, so I'm I'm forcing this to be a a decision. Um, GameStop, GameSlop HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. <laughs> Will that even fit? Because, like, I was just thinking we could use GameSlop, we could combine it with the word cyber, which I just really like for some reason, and do cyberslop. Or, <laughs> um, oh, what was the other one that I was like? Where was it? Shit. Uh, oh, epic no scope speedrun meals. I just thought it was really fucking funny. <laughs> we just like wait. <laughs> Two point eight final chapter. Oh, we can't fit prologue on the end, but technically this fits. <laughs> um, how about it? I mean, f fuck it, right? We have to keep going. I'm so sorry, y'all. I... <laughs> Whenever anything's like, type some words. I'm like, give me like three hours, actually. Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Two Flower, if you're still here, I <laughs> apologize for how bloody long we've been waffling on this. Um... <laughs> but... How's... How's... How's this, y'all? You feeling it? This is the power of a text box. <laughs> yes, this is the power of this, this cyber slop cafe. Oh my god. Hmm. Sorry, sorry. Slop. Hmm. I feel like, well, it's not exactly a cafe. It's like the full restaurant deal, right? Uh, maybe like, you genuinely, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Trying very carefully to like hit the backspace and not accidentally hit enter on some garbage. Um, or like not on some garbage, but on like an incomplete title. I mean, that would also, probably be fucking hilarious anyway, but I'm curious. Why specifically 2.8? Like, I'll go for it. But <laughs> but uh it'll ask you to confirm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um You like it? I mean, I think we're finally good here, then. I'm gonna- <laughs> Is that right? Is it? I mean, like, I guess so. That works. Cyberslop HD 2.8 Cafe. Sure. <laughs> No! No, do not tell me that my internet's down. Oh my god, it's just my phone. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm still... Uh, you're making fun of a Final Fantasy game name. Okay. Also, I'm really glad my internet's not down. My phone's like reconnecting to chat. And I was like, don't do this to me right now. <gasps> don't do this to me. 
Okay, I'm reconnected <laughs> on my phone. Um, yeah, I don't know why my phone just disconnected. Don't like that. Um, but as long as the actual stream feed is good, then like... Oh, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Oh my god. <laughs> I see. We should- I did. I did do it. Let's call it Cyberswap HD 2.8 Cafe. <laughs> so, oh my god, how many times am I gonna have to read this out loud? <laughs> Cyberswap HD 2.8 Cafe. I like it. We can work with that. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Let's hear it for Cyberswap HD 2.8 Cafe. Why is it written in Roman numerals, point eight? Oh my god. Cause it's- Cause it's fucking Kingdom Hearts, they just gotta be like that. <laughs> Our home lives again. How exciting! Fuck yeah! A toast then? One by one, everyone raises their glasses. I fetch my room temperature drink and raise mine high in return. For those we've lost and those we've yet to meet, let's do this right. Together we can accomplish anything. And now, let's get super drunk! Okay, so I'm leaning away from the last one. <laughs> Don't know why any part of that name is the way it is. Mm, that's fair. I... I don't know, Kingdom Hearts just, like, does... shit. <laughs> um... I like Together We Can Accomplish Anything. I think that's very sweet. You're laughing so hard hearing it out loud. I know, it's so ridiculous, but that's why it's fucking perfect. <laughs> okay. Um... We're running on time, so I'm just- I'm gonna motor forward with this decision, because it's- We spent way too long thinking of a name. Together, we can accomplish anything. I know that together, we can accomplish anything. For Slyber Slop and Sly- Fuck. <laughs> For Cyber Slop HD 2.8 Cafe and the future. For Cyber Slop HD 2.8 Cafe. This is so fucking dumb. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. Losing everything, then getting it all back, and then some. It's been a roller coaster of a week, to be sure. But I can't rest now. Absolutely not. I need to chart I need to take charge of this project and my life in general. I have to do for them what Francine did for us. That's okay. I'm ready. I'm willing. And this is our time. Yay! You've cleared level 6 of Arcade Spirits. A winner is you. Now let's see your score. You're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate person. Also, you've scored 21,150 points. Woohoo! Shops in the volcano-devastated city of Pompeii bear the characteristic of a pizzeria. That's a neat, if a bit depressing, pizza fact just for you. <laughs> Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level 7? Yes. Yes. And return. Yeah, we spent way too long on the name, so um... Let's get a little bit into chapter 7 at least. <laughs> Okay, so now I think, you know, we'll finally get to see the fruits of our labors. Um, new Game Plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, well, we will get to see the results of the decisions that we made, at the very least. Ah, yes, the beautiful city skyscrapers. It is the distant future year 20XX. And for the first time, 
I am entirely in control of my destiny. I am no longer merely working for an arcade. Now, I'm working on my future. Which admittedly still involves working in an arcade, but still. My future. I'll admit, it feels weird. I'd grown so used to going with the flow, letting life batter and bruise me, that having a true and honest hand on the controls is a bit terrifying. Everyone's counting on me to keep the flame of Miss Francine's fun plux alive as we move into the era of Cyber Slop HD 2.8 Cafe. <laughs> I'm gonna read the full title every time. And, well... Mm. Honestly, I'm super anxious about it all. I want this to be perfect, I will make it so, or it's gonna be fine. It has to be. Yes, my favorite year, uh, 20XX. <laughs> Um, hmm, kind of like the, the, the middle one. I mean, the top one is, you know, fair and accurate, but you know, we're going to put the vibes out there that, uh, we're going to make it perfect. That's what I'm thinking anyway, with, uh, leaning towards that one. Um... We good? I'm gonna move around forward. I don't want to push too quickly because I know there's like a touch of lag on the line today. But, uh. Fantastic. Thank you for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Positivity? Okay, good. Yeah. Um. I just want to. I just want to make sure I'm not like bulldozing anyone's uh, input. But. We gotta. Ski daddle at it. A little bit. <laughs> oh, the last one is the basic one. Yes, we are back to standard. Oh, yes. Yeah, so the basic choices always get marked as the basic choice. Um, yeah. I want this to be perfect. My hands are on the controls, and I intend to steer this ship true. They're relying on me to be the steady rock in the chaos of this new project, so that's what I have to be. I'll make them all proud of me. I'll make them all proud of me, and proud to be a part of Cyberslop HD 2.8 Cafe. I wonder if I'll ever be able to say that name without laughing. <laughs> if there's one driving reason to make Cyberslop HD 2.8 Cafe work, fuck. <laughs> it's Ashley. To give her a home away from home after the fall of the funplex. This will be ours, and I'm not going to settle for anything less, no matter what it takes. Now all that's left is to get through the op is to get through opening day without incident. I arrived early that morning to go over any last minute preparations and make sure everything is in order. Plus, Juniper was sick of watching me pace back and forth at home after breakfast. So she lovingly shoved me out of the apartment and told me to be productive. <laughs> now I stood in awe of the building, the dream I poured my heart and soul into. I still barely believed it myself. I paused a moment to let the reality finally hit me, and then stepped into my destiny. Okay, loving the colors. Pushing open the doors to Cyber Slop HD 2.8 Cafe, <laughs> I was greeted by relative peace and quiet. Just the beeps and boops and people moving about doing last minute preparations. So fantastic, I'm glad you went with this. I am too, but I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to say that name with a flat face. <laughs> Did that say Megalovania Remix or something else? There's <laughs> images in the upper left corner. There's images rotating through. They're showing off high scores. Yeah. But the dancing one appeared to me to say Megalovania. But maybe I just have uh, Undertale 
megalovania homestuck on the brain. <laughs> um, okay, Fast Cars 5. I think the loop is... Is it looping now? Um... Showtime stage. Yeah, showtime stage. Maybe it's supposed to say Mega... No, it says like Mega Nova Remix or something. There's no I in between the V and the A. I just have a perpetual internet brain anyway. <laughs> we traveled a long and arduous road ever since the great wake wake conspiracy. <laughs> Gavin secured us a great rental space, an abandoned pizza place with an with that all too familiar triangular roof. Nobody else wanted it, but we didn't care about the funny shake. Funny shape, quirk is in our favor. And I really couldn't have done all the renovations this place needed without the help of our financial benefactor. Hamza proved true to his word, fronting us as much money as we needed to make this happen. Now we've got a family restaurant and arcade to rival Deco's palace. Well, okay, it's very small compared to Deco's palace, but quality over quantity. We went with a familiar layout. If it ain't broke and if it ain't broke and all that, to show that we've still got the spirit and passion that made the Funplex great. But it's not all a carbon copy. We've got a few new additions that Francine would even be proud of. The video wall is a nice touch. That one was my idea. It alternates between running music videos, game promos, and high score leaderboards. We also repainted and did a general update on all the appliances and fixtures to give it a more finished feel and less of a retired pizza place turned arcade vibe. Teo and Queen Bee worked together to pick out a few key games that appeal to the esports community. We've got fighting games, racing games, shooting games, dancing games. You want head to head action? We got it. Granted, we still have a decent selection of our other stuff too, so all tastes are catered to, but Queen Bee's confident that this will put it will pull in the fighting game community as well as the MOBA community. I still have no idea what a MOBA is aside from Fist of Discomfort like, but Queen Bee assures me it's hot shit right now. <laughs> Alice knows karate, yeah, on the video screen. Oh cute, the little heart in the wall. Oh. I I don't know what a MOBA is either. <laughs> Juniper and Ashley really nailed our grand experiment in unique branding. It's completely on point. By spearheading our advertising campaign, the buzz is building. Our hype train is pulling in passengers of all sorts, and the imagery they've created will ride with them long after they've left. Definitely the right call to make. They got ski ball 10 out of 10. <laughs> all of my decisions, all of my choices, made this. Made Cyberslop HD 2.8 Cafe <laughs> what it is. <laughs> so much labor and love went into the project from all of us, and now all that's left is to officially open these doors. But before that fateful hour begins, I still want to do one last check on operations, just in case. The restaurant side of this equation proved to be very complicated. I'd go cross-eyed trying to parse the number of side of the numbers of that side of the business. Oh yeah, restaurants are really fucking complicated to run. Hopefully it wouldn't drive us to bankruptcy, or the arcade wouldn't bankrupt the restaurant, or both at the same time. Hark! The great Hamza senses concern from his business partner. Perfection. Rest assured, Roxy Nitrum, that Hamza has seen to all has seen to all that requires seeing to. Our delicacy shall ring true across taste buds across this city. I'm not sure I would consider burgers and buffalo wings as delicacies. Hamza is aware we shall never earn five stars with our cuisine, but we shall be the pinnacle of deep fried foodstuffs. <laughs> Knew the name was coming again. All my choices made this. Yes. These are just, that's the decision that we collectively made. 
Today, Hamza will, over Hamza will oversee operations. Beyond this opening day, I leave you in the hands of my capable chefs and waitstaff. But you'll be in touch, right? I'd hate to have you jet off like to like Istanbul, not Constantinople. <laughs> and suddenly everything's on fire. <laughs> no matter what corner of the globe Hamza's travels take him to, he can be summoned at the speed of light. Well, at the speed of air travel, really. <laughs> And now, back to my kitchen. Our glorious future together in business awaits. Hamza claps twice before leaving in a flourish. Okay, being partners with Hamza is going to take some getting used to. <laughs> Running a restaurant and an arcade is riskier than I thought it'd be. But for all his quirkiness, he knows business, right? He's rich. Rich people are smart, right? Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. After my quick check-in, I notice the clock. Its unforgiving hands tell me it's not long now. See? Everything going perfectly. No detail overlooked. Just according to Kikaku. Translator's note, Kikaku means plan? <laughs> oh my god, that's perfect. These memes, yeah. Today's uh, today's stream, hitting it with the memes and references. This chunk of story, hitting it the fuck home. <laughs> I'm proud of everything we've accomplished. When when those doors open and all our regulars come back to play, when new folks drawn in by our advertising wander in. It'll all click. I allow myself a smile, pleased with our progress. Today is going to be a great day. The first day of our new dream. It'll be wonderful. As long as no unforeseen problems pop up. Haha, <laughs> haha, <laughs> foreshadowing. <laughs> Is this the new mascot costume? He doesn't look happy about it though. Oh my god, did she cut, like, cut her hair for this? Or is that a wig? Yo, indeed. Very snazzy, but like, is she gonna be comfortable wearing that all the time? Uh, Roxy. Er, Roxy, I watch Ashley approach me. Immediately, I'm speechless. This is the first time I've seen Ashley's mascot costume for Cyber Slop HD 2.8 Cafe. Oh my god, this mascot for a place called Cyber Slop. <laughs> She's been keeping it under wraps for so long. Ashley and Juniper have been working really hard on matching all the new marketing designs to her newest mascot idea. I can't believe she managed to keep this costume a complete secret from me. I really had no idea. And upon seeing her in it, I'm overcome with emotion. <laughs> it's just so... <laughs> that is quite a costume. It's very magical, girl. Um... It also looks uncomfortable, uh, to me, anyway. Uh, and Ashley does not look co very comfortable herself. Um, what do you say? It's so cute and perfect. It's not my style, but it's in the style with cyberpunk, cyber, cyberpunk, Jesus Christ, not that fucking disaster game. Um, <laughs> cyber slop HD 2.8 cafe, or it's a hundred percent Ashley. Hmm. How are y'all feeling about this? I don't want to necessarily tell her like, oh, it's not my style. But the look on her face is telling me it's so cute and perfect is either going to be the reassurance that she needs or make her more conflicted and upset about whatever's on her mind. 
the neutral the the basic answer definitely is like a basic answer it's 100 percent actually like of course it is um she's thinking about her magical girl attack cyber slop tsunami <laughs> oh that's ridiculous i love it uh um Um, um, I don't know, I guess, hmm, it's hard to, it's hard to figure out what the, cause like, if I was actually in this situation in real life, I think my first response would be, Uh, hey, what's up? Because she doesn't look very happy. But, oh, I guess now that I think it, I probably would have seen, been like, wow, you look great. What's going on, though? You don't look too happy about it. <laughs> um, tough one because it's hard to read video game character emotions. Yeah. I mean, if I remember correctly, we have yet to ex have a situation, we have yet to have a glass him situation in this game. <laughs> Um, there have definitely been times where the dialogue was taken in a direction that I wasn't expecting, but not in, like, an extreme way. Cute? Yeah, sure. It's so cute and perfect. Oh, that was the goofy response. Okay. <laughs> I'm biased. I mean, like, I was feeling kind of like that was probably the one to go with as well. But I don't know. That just say that just said it was the goofy response, which makes me feel not <laughs> great about it. Um, I don't know. There have been times when I thought things weren't gonna go over well and then they did, so we'll see. I couldn't say enough good things about Ashley's new costume. She looks ador she looks so adorable in it. Ugh, I wish I could whisk her off her feet and we could skip out on work today. Be still, my beating heart. I'm gonna need a moment to calm down. <laughs> okay, we got a relationship point. I freaking love it, just as much as I love you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. It's very well done. I expected nothing. I'd expect nothing less of you, Ashley. <sighs> Her face isn't changing though, and it's making me worried. It's such a relief. With all the stress that I've been dealing with in regards to the new opening, I have one thing in be flaw. I, to have one thing be flawless is really going to make this opening go much more smoothly. I noticed my praise isn't having much of an effect on Ashley, though. I'd expect her to be bub- I expect her to be her bubbly, happy self. She's always so excited to show me her cosplays and projects, but something is different here. She's completely downtrodden. Oh, Roxy. I hate it. Oh, honey. What? What? Ashley, what do you mean? It looks fantastic. It's it's perfectly... Before I can finish, Ashley snatches up my words. Oh, it's so awful! I hate everything about it. The bows are all wonky, and some of the stitches didn't sew through properly on my skirt. The logo is all smudge-looking, and my prop staff has too many faults to list off. Oh, it's horrible. Whoa, Ashley, calm down for a minute. I don't see any of these faults you're claiming. The stress must be getting to Ashley, too. I step towards her in an attempt to ease her. I place my hand on her shoulder and look directly into her eyes. Honestly, truly, it looks amazing. You're amazing. I kiss her softly atop her forehead and smile gently. Ashley looks back at me, blinking back tears, her lower lip quivering. She swallows once before answering me. I'm sorry, it's just... it's, it's so awful! I... I ruined everything! The floodgates open as tears begin streaking down her face. Fuck, go back. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing that this was... going to end up happening, regardless of which one we, uh, chose. What, 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 what do we do? What do we do? Everything's on fire. 
I quickly envelope Ashley in a hug and she continues to cry into my chest. You haven't ruined anything. We haven't even opened, so there's nothing to ruin. <laughs> I try to make light of the situation to get her to crack a smile, but it has the opposite effect and Ashley sobs harder. This is supposed to be your big day, your moment of glory, and here I am wasting your time and your energy. You, sh you shouldn't bother with me. Ashley, honey... Ashley wriggles free from my arms and pushes me away. That's just what I am, just a waste of space. Oh, I'm nothing. Where the heck is this coming from? I've never seen Ashley this worked up on a serious self-loathing bender. Uh, that's not true, Ashley. You are far from nothing. Every time I try to say something nice, Ashley fights back, refusing to accept the truth. Refusing to accept herself. I don't deserve you. You should be with someone better. Someone who's prettier, handsomer, and more talented, smarter, and funnier, and nicer than me. But that is you. You are all of those things. I love you wholeheartedly. She keeps spiraling farther and farther into despair. Her negativity is crescendoing. Normally, I have one of three different solutions to solve any number of problems. But for once, I don't think anything I say will help this situation. You deserve someone who's got their life together and knows who they really are. Hmm. I kind of suspected this from the beginning, but maybe this costume is just making Ashley feel really grossly dysphoric. It's a thought. Um, yeah. Because I know she mentioned when we did the convention, you know, we kind of asked, you know, why, what was it, what did we ask her? It was like, why she was cosplaying as a male character and she was kind of like i like exploring this side of me um and i feel very connected to it kind of thing i think if i remember correctly um but like yeah like of all the things to trigger a self-hate spiral dysphoria is a hell of a drug <laughs> i could also be wrong <laughs> But that is what I'm thinking at the moment. Nice lampshading. Yeah, one of three different problems. No, one of three different solutions to solve any number of problems. <laughs> yeah. You deserve someone who's got their life together and knows who they really are. Trying to comfort her again, I put my arm around her. She retracts immediately from my touch and her face contorts in a look of pain and disgust. Oh. God, it's all ruined! Ashley yells at me, and I am silenced. Went on about the sewing and the bows and the logo, but like... I think it's how high-key fem this is. Yeah, it's like, I noticed... No, don't blame yourself for this. This is just... I think that this is just like the way that the story beats were set for this chapter. I don't think it was necessarily determined by which option we chose at this point. All, all, all signs were diverting, diverging, but eventually leading to uh, the situation. Um, like, imagine if we'd said, "It's not, it's not my thing, but it's perfect for the store." Uh, for example. You know, she would have been like, oh, I knew it was bad, and then it would have led this way anyway. You know what I mean? <sighs> but yeah, the moment I saw this, I was like, whoa, that's like, yeah, very magical girl, but like looks uncomfortable, doesn't look um, like the types of costumes that we've seen Ashley in so far. Granted, that hasn't been very many, but... Ashley yells at me, and I am silenced. As the wave of emotion crests, a pang of realization hits her that she was completely overtaken by her own emotions. She takes a breath, stifled by sobs. Oh, everything's ruined. Tears roll continually down her face, hitting the unrelenting arcade floor. 
Roxy, I just can't... I, I can't do this. Ashley's words break my heart. How can she say such things about herself? This is not something I'm going to sit back and take lightly. Ashley needs help, not just... just not for me. If I keep pushing, it may push her away. What she really needs. Oh boy. <laughs> hmm. So these are all uh, pretty heavy options to pick from. You should consider seeing a therapist. Do you want me to call a help hotline? Or you need help from anyone that's not me? Um. Hmm. 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 <laughs> it is time for more thinking noises. Ah, uh, you did not fuck up. This is the direction that the story was gonna head. Regardless of choice. They all split three different paths, but they were all gonna come right back around to this. Um... Hmm... <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Game was gonna go this way regardless. All three of these sound dismissive. God, what do we do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, all three of these sound like... Hmm... But that's the thing, is that we've hit kind of options like this before, where we're kind of like, I don't know about... I don't know if I would pick any of these. Um, but, um, it, like, whatever one we pick in the end ends up being fine, right? <laughs> Thinking noises are valid, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I don't think the last one is a very good option. I don't think I would pick the last one. Um, I guess the middle one? I don't know, because, like, you should consider seeing a therapist seems super heavy-handed. Um... And it's less immediate. When a person is in distress, then, you know, it's better to get them what they need when they are experiencing the distress. And not just, like, you know. Like, maybe that's something for down the line. If it's needed. But, yeah, so I guess, I don't know, I guess I'm leaning on the middle one. Um, him, him... I don't know. Strong thoughts. I'm gonna have a drink of water now. Um, so I'll just take a drink of water and then we'll keep going. But if there's any strong objections, feel free to voice. Hotline then? I suppose so. Do you... Want me to call a help hotline? Gutsy, okay. I can see Ashley is hurting, and there's nothing I can do to help that. If she continues like this, I'm afraid for her. Do you want me to call a wellness crisis hotline for you? Just nod, and I can take care of setting things up for you, no problem. Ashley, I'm saying this seriously because I care for you and I'm worried about you. I want you to be happy with yourself and love yourself. Ashley is stunned as she stops crying. Sniffling up the last tears, she looks back at me, shocked. What? Oh. 
See, I had a feeling that maybe the, end, the result was just going to be that all three of those options were going to end badly, because none of them looked very good. Um... Yeah, I don't think that any of those choices would have ended well. Because they were all... Yeah, like, sound... You know, kind of dismissive sounding. Good news, I don't have to work in this morning, so I'm glad that I'm not allowed you to be there. Uh, well, I'm glad that you can be here as well. I do have work tomorrow. It's a 2 o'clock, though. So, I got some time. Although I'm thinking after this scene resolves itself, it will be time for the evening, because we're like half an hour over time. I just figured, you know, we took so fucking long making the name, we might as well make some actual further progress. <laughs> How dare you imply that I need help? All I need is for you to listen to me. I have been listening to you and trying to comfort you, but... You aren't seeing the reason for my words, and you don't believe me. I do believe you think that way. You're just wrong is all. You don't need- I don't need you trying to convince me otherwise. And I certainly don't need any help. I'm fine. Uh, does not seem like it, my dear. Oh, but that's... See, saying that out loud isn't the right response. <laughs> Necessarily. Not in all situations. Mm. You are not fine. I want Ashley to understand why this is important. Oh, none of these are gonna end well. Ugh, y'all, I've been in this exact fucking conversation before. It... You can't force somebody to realize that their shit is not in a good place. It has to come from within themselves. Like... <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, it's poking, it's, it's poking a few personal experiences for me. <laughs> um, I've tried all three of these options, multiple occasions. You can't force someone into it. You just fucking... Like, they have to be ready, and it's very clear that Ashley's not ready, so I think none of these answers are going to get a very good response. Let me help you with this. <sighs> yeah. I mean, yeah, like, none of these are gonna get, like, a good response. I already know it. Because, like, you're in denial is just gonna get more defensive. Um, many people seek help from professionals. The logic of that is not gonna get through. Um, let me help you with this. She just said she doesn't want her help with this. She's fine, blah, blah, blah. Um... Make more of a DM topic. Yeah. Yeah, this is a scenario that I'm sure hits home for a lot of folks. Um, yeah. Let me help you with this. Ashley, I may not be able to help you myself, but I can at least get you the... Help you get the proper people that can. I can empathize and be here for you, but I can't guide you through this myself. Oh, yeah. Y'all, do not try to play therapist for... Um, a partner, a romantic partner, ends not very well. Fun fact. <laughs> okay, that actually went well. Okay. We got relationship points for that one. But 
I know it's scary and hard to accept help. If you just rem if you remember just a little bit ago, I had to do it too. It wasn't easy, and it took you and everyone else from the Funplex to lift me up from my rut. Without your wake intervention and the wake conspiracy, I'd still be lost. But I did it, and I know you're strong. You can do this too. Ugh, you don't understand anything. Ashley averts her gaze to the floor and sniffles. I need to go reapply my makeup before I attend to the floor. She completely ignores what I've said and runs off. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes you can just hope that you planted the little seed, and I hope we have planted the little seed that will grow into some sort of acceptance, realization. I'm left in a wake of feelings, and I don't know how to handle this. Fortunately or unfortunately, my attention is focused onto my, my, uh, onto my now buzzing phone. Beep, beep. Beep beep, Roxy. You should... Beep beep. Roxy, you should have opened the doors three minutes and 24 seconds ago. Oh, fuck. 25 seconds, 26 seconds, 27 seconds. Not helping, Iris. <laughs> I get it, Iris. Thanks. I'll be right there. Okay. <laughs> Iris fades away and I close my phone. I guess I need to concentrate on officially opening Cyberslop HD 2.8 Cafe now. <laughs> oh. But first, I should change into a non-tear-soaked hoodie. Ugh, I can't handle this right now. As much as I want to stop everything and sort through this mess, I've got a job to do today. There will be time later to patch things up with Ashley. Presumably. I need to at least try to put this turmoil behind me so I can focus on the first day of Cyberslop HD 2.8 Cafe with a smile. <laughs> I think planting the seed there is all you can do. Yep. Yeah. Despite reeling from that incident just now, I'm ready to do this. Because I have to be ready. No choice. Man, it really fucking sucks to be in these kind of situations. Where it's like, wow, big emotions just happened, but, um, I guess I'm gonna go, like, uh, write an exam now. <laughs> or whatever. You know what I mean? I've got big plans for the opening ceremony. I'm going to open the doors, give my pre prepared speech to the gathered masses, and stay on hand to greet gamers as they enter. Okay. Yeah, emotional scene followed by Cyberslop HD 2.8 Cafe. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Um, so... I think the grand opening of the doors is a good place to pause, and I think we've probably made up for the lost time from name searching. Um. Whew. Have another big stretch there. Oh, okay. So that was a lot. <laughs> a lot happened today. That was a packed one. Like, packed with big important decisions, packed one. Um, Big decisions, big emotions. Hate having professional responsibilities with personal and emotional concerns. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is really shitty to... You know, you're trying to, like, do, do, your, do your shit, but 
but then it's like, oh god, everything is on fire, actually. <laughs> hmm. Well. So let's see, we set up we set up shop and we've set ourselves up for an interesting opening day. And that is what uh, that is what we shall do. Next Wednesday <laughs> Next Wednesday, next time on Arcade Spirits, ooh, uh, we continue chapter seven, second last chapter. We are in the home stretch. Um, we continue chapter seven and see what opening day has to offer us. It is already tossing a few curveballs before the doors have even opened. So I am intrigued, excited, if you may, um, to see what else is in store. Um, yeah, I'm zoning out a little bit. I need more sleep. Um, <laughs> for once, I think I'm actually gonna go to bed, like, now-ish. <laughs> Um, I gotta clock around, because I have a fucking 9 a.m. appointment on Friday, god. Um, and I've been waking up at, like, 1 or 2 p.m. usually these days, and going to bed at, like, 5 a.m. So, gotta fix that shit. Um, yes, thank you all so much for coming and spending these hours... Or however long you've been here, thanks for hanging out. Greatly appreciate your presence. And uh, shout out again, thank you so much to Two Flower for stopping by. Um, yeah, I've been having an amazing time with this game. It's very exciting to hear that they're working on a sequel. Um, but yes, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, yeah, let me, I should save the game. <laughs> That's a novel idea. Main menu. Indeed. Arcade Spirits resuming one week from today. We're gonna keep on revving through. This weekend, Homestuck reread streams keeping on moving. We have hit the murder stuck zone. It's gonna be good. We're starting Friday with Kanaya Return to Core and continuing on from there. That's all for today, folks. Thanks for hanging out. Have a lovely, splendiferous rest of your day, whatever you may be getting up to. Fingers crossed, I'll be seeing y'all right back here for more of these shenanigans. <laughs> Good newt. Uh, I fucking love that. I'll see you around and good newt. <laughs>